our first project and it also could kind of double as a DIY gift idea would be to upcycle this concrete brick. Now this brick I did find in my garage but I know you can find them at Lowe's for just a few dollars and I thought a fun way to kind of upcycle them maybe if you have someone in your life who's recently moved or bought a house would be to take the numbers of their address and just place it on the front of one of these bricks and they can plant herbs or flowers or whatever they would like. So I went to Dollar Tree and I found four of these packets of herbs that my mom will be able to plant as I'm gifting this to her since she just bought a house. And I liked this brick a lot because you have three different slots here, but you also have drainage holes, which I think is really nice. So it's kind of like made for this project in my opinion. So I'm just taking the numbers um, that I had picked up from Lowe's and they had such a wide variety. I ended up opting for the more expensive ones because they didn't have holes that you would see the screw in the front so these screws would be screwed in from the back but we're not doing any of that i don't have the kind of tools or the patience for it we are just going to use some good old-fashioned super glue gel to attach these um, numbers to the front of this brick and as for the measurements i pretty much just eyeballed it i did make sure that all of the numbers were at the same height and then I added a generous amount of that super glue gel. I prefer the gel because I think it just gives you better control versus the liquid. I think it gets too runny and it's kind of hard to keep it in one place. So if you have the choice, I always like to choose the gel. I don't know about using hot glue or E6000 for this specific project. I tend to find that hot glue with metal doesn't stick that great. And I know that this is gonna be going outside. So I wanna make sure that it has a good secure hold. With the numbers all in place, it's just time now to fill it. And I'm going to give those seed packets to my mom for her to do it because I am not a gardener. I want to be, but I'm not good at it. So just for a visual so you guys can see what it'll look like, I'm gonna place these um, thrifted florals that I have on hand and put them in the slots that the herbs will eventually go in. And with all of that filled, that pretty much wraps up the first project. And for the next project, I wanted to make a stone serving tray. And basically all you need for this project are two matching cabinet poles and one piece of leftover flooring. I have this tile when we were sampling different tiles for our bathroom. So I'm gonna be using that as the base of my tray. And then I'm just measuring it out to kind of see what I'm working with. And I opted for these bigger pools because I think that they just look better with the scale of how big our tray is going to be. So when I I'm trying to measure where the pools are gonna go. There is a tool that you can buy at Lowe's that can kind of make this process go a lot faster, but it doesn't accommodate for really long pools like this one. So I'm gonna take some super glue and I'm just gonna glue all the way down, just enough so that it doesn't fall out or not grip well to the tile, but I don't wanna see a bunch of glue on the sides. But if it does happen, I have a little trick. So I'm just adding enough super glue. I drew a line where the handle is going to need to go and I'm just gonna actually take a baby wipe while it's still not completely hardened and wipe the excess off. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. And that finishes off our stone serving try. And kind of sticking with that same theme, I have lots of square tiles left over from when we were deciding on a backsplash for our kitchen. So I have three of each color, so I decided I was going to make a set of six coasters. Again, this would make an awesome DIY gift idea if you know somebody who's getting married or Mother's Day or Father's Day, definitely a good gift idea and super easy. So I did have to go to Dollar Tree and buy one of these cork adhesive sheets, which actually worked out perfect because it was the exact size I needed for all six coasters. So um, I am just going to now trace out one of the coasters onto this cork sheet and I'm gonna repeat that process until they are all cut. Don't mind the humpback whale, that's really not part of the DIY. But and to make sure that they're big enough, I'm just going to cut out the first two squares and I'm just using my fabric scissors here. And I have to say that this cork sheet that the Dollar Tree sells is probably one of my favorite products that they sell because it cuts down your DIY time in half and you can make a set of six coasters in five minutes or less. 
and I'm just placing it right directly on the bottom and that is it and I will repeat that process until all six coasters are completed and you don't see any cork sticking out of the bottom. And for the last project for this video, I wanted to make a faux basket planter. Basket planters can oftentimes be really expensive. And I think that this is a nice way to kind of get that look for way less. So I'm just taking a container that I had in my recycle bin and I have this woven placemat that I picked up from the thrift store about a year ago for about 25 cents. And I'm just going to wrap this canister in this basket weave placemat. And one thing I do wanna say is when you are wrapping things that are woven, don't cut it until you've added all of your adhesive because I've had this go the wrong way because if you cut it first, it makes it really challenging to have all of those weavings stick together because you're kind of disassembling it. So I would say get it where you want it first and then start cutting. And just for a little bit of extra securement, I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue to the rim of the bottom, and then I'm going to trim off the excess once that dries so it sits on the shelf nice and flat. And if you want this to be a planter for a live plant, you can add drainage holes very easily. Just take an old screw and a hammer and make drainage holes to the bottom. And this is how my faux basket planter turned out. And that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked today's video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and tell me down in the comments which project was your favorite or which one you would like to recreate. And I will see you next Sunday. Bye.